Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Smart Pigs. Now, many farmers are faced with the challenge of keeping their farms pest and disease free. While it may sound simple in theory, the reality is that it's not. In a previous episode, we talked about internal parasites and how they can affect farmers. On today's episode, we will talk about external parasites and how they can affect your pigs. Joining me is Dr. Edward Karioki. Karibu Daktari. Thanks a lot. In a previous episode, when we had you back on last time, we talked about internal parasites. Yeah. And you mentioned that a parasite such as roundworms comes from feeds, yeah. right? Yeah. That comes from feeds. Comes so from what about feed. external parasites? Where do they come from? It's good to have me once again. And uh, we'll continue learning a lot about external parasites. They are present in the environment. So the challenge is pre preventing them from getting from the environment or from other animals to the pigs that we are rearing. So um, maybe uh, from dogs, if a farmer, you've got dogs at home, if you have sheep, if you have goats, these are potential sources of external parasites to the pigs. So you have to control the external parasites from other animals and even in your homestead so that you control them even getting to our pigs. Now, Daktari, in another episode that we talked about internal parasites, yeah. you mentioned that parasites such as roundworms can be gotten from the, simply the type of feeds that a farmer can give to their pigs. Mm -hmm. What about external parasites? Where can you find them? When we talk about external parasites, Usually we have them in the environment, in the homestead, with other animals, say dogs, say goats, say cats, and even cattle. So uh, these are the animals that are a source of parasites, even to our pigs, or just to the environment. So if we are able to control the parasites in these other animals, then as well, even in the pigs, we'll, we'll have managed them. So they are in the environment, they are in our homestead, and uh, pigs will easily get them if you let them out or you, if you mix them with other animals. So we have them in the environment. It's whether we control them that makes the difference. Now, Daktari, how many types of external parasites are found in pigs? And which are the common ones that affect the Kenyan pig farmers? In our common farming setup, we have a range of external parasites that, that uh, infest our pigs. Most important, I think, are the mites. Also, we'll find fleas, we'll find lice, might find ticks. Flies also are a very common one, and we tend to overlook flies. But yes, they are external parasites, and they can be a nuisance. Some others do bite, and they are also an important uh, thing to consider. Yeah. Let's talk about mange. Now, there are many times where I have gone to a pig farm, mm -hmm. and one name that keeps coming up during the challenges is mange. Mm -hmm. Where does mange come from? Mange is generally infestation with mites. Just as I've mentioned, mites is one of the very serious external parasites when we come to pigs. As I said earlier, mites are in the environment and they can be in other animals they can they can infest even humans if not controlled so just as that they get to our pigs either from the shed from the homestead if you let your pigs out they'll get the mites and uh, usually older 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 pigs infest the younger pigs with mites if if you have already an infestation in the in the pen so uh, mites are a problem of controlling it in your pen. If you control it, you might not have any other problems going forward. Okay. Yeah. Now, from my research, I've read that there are two types of mange. Yeah. Can you tell us about these two types and the key differences between them? Mange is really 
generally infestation with mites, but there are two types of mites. You have the demodectic mites and the sarcoptic mites. And the difference is not much. It's only the variety of mites that infest the, the pig because they cause the same kind of this disease. They cause the same kind of harm and the same kind of, of lesions on the skin. It, it all depends with part of the body that either of the ticks like and uh, whether it likes burrowing into the, deep into the skin or it likes staying just on the surface. So like the sarcoptic uh, will, will not go very deep in the skin and the demodex mites will go deep in the skin and you will find very deep ulcers as opposed to the sarcoptic. But generally you won't, you won't be able to note a very big difference. You just know that they have a skin ulcers and a very rough skin that is reoccurring even after treatment if the treatment is not very regular. Yeah. You've mentioned about lesions, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the signs and symptoms that you can tell mm -hmm. that this is my pig and it's infected by mange? When we talk about mange, as I've said, mites will burrow into the skin and anything that, that digs into your skin, of course, it's going to cause irritation. With that irritation, the, the, the pigs will want to scratch themselves to the wall of the pen they will want even maybe to use their feet to scratch whether, where it's itching. And uh, physically, you will be able to tell that it's mites from the skin because it, it becomes thickened because the, the ticks are, are uh, the, the mites are digging into the skin and the, the, bo the pig's body uh, becomes inflamed as a reaction to the, to the mites. So you will see that the skin is becoming thickened and it's becoming rough. Then with the scratching, it might become uh, red because of the, of the pain, the pain from the scratch. And uh, that way you'll, you'll be able to conclude that you are dealing with, with mites. Doctor, you've mentioned about the tendency for pigs to go and scratch themselves on a wall. The wall. Is it, so if a pig farmer finds that nguru yake anapenanga kwenda hapo kwa wall, nanajikuna kuna, that's mites. That is most of the time mites. It could be fleas, it could be lice, anything that is irritating the skin. But more often, and if again you find the skin is thickened, it, that is more often mites. So, Doctor, you mean to tell me that this is just not any typical pig behavior? No, 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 no. We should not take it for typical pig behavior. Pigs won't go to the wall just to scratch for no reason. And if you find it is persist persistent, like every after two, three minutes, it goes to scratch. Another five minutes, it goes to scratch. That is not typical pig behavior. It means there, there is something that is irritating the skin. So you should not take it easy. You should, you should go further and find out what is, what is it that is irritating your, your pig's skin. Yeah. What about this? You find that sometimes that this whitish, they look like kind of like dandruffs. Dandruff. You know the dandruffs yeah. you find on your head? Dandruff, yeah. 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 Uh, that can be fungal lesions, the ringworms, uh, and uh, internal worms also manifest with very rough coat and the skin having such kind of dandruff. So if you find that, Either you've not dewormed your pig for some time, or also you could be dealing with ringworms, or even with mites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with uh, I mentioned that there are mites that don't go very deep on the skin. Mm -hmm. There are some that uh, stay shallow or superficial on the skin. So that one could be causing uh, such lesions that could look like dandruff. Mm -hmm. And if they are itchy, then that is mites. Okay. Now, when it comes to the life cycle of a mite, mm -hmm. at which point is, is it dangerous for the pig? Maybe you can take us through the entire cycle and then tell us which points are dangerous. Okay. Mites, adult mites, will, will, uh, will burrow the skin and then they will lay eggs there. Then they will hatch into a nymph. Then that nymph will grow into an adult. Now, the process of the adult uh, mite digging into the skin is the one that causes a lot of irritation. Uh, I would say the whole process is very uncomfortable 
to the pig because after the adult digs into the skin and then there are eggs hatching, then there are the, the young ones growing in the skin, it will never be comfortable. But the adult ones digging in the, in the skin, that is the one that causes a lot of irritation and itching and uh, your, your pig will always be uncomfortable trying to scratch and is the is the itch mm -hmm. yeah and how do you treat that mm, good uh, about treating pigs and uh, when we talk about treatment i always uh, advise preventing is better than than treating because when we talk about treating you already as the farmer have the problem but if you can do something to avert the problem so that the problem does not come to you does not affect your farm that is even better when we come to the point that you have mange you have and your pigs have mites then you need to call a vet and uh, the vet will assess the extent the extent of the skin lesions the extent of the discomfort extent of the damage to the skin and if it's if it's very damaged the itch is so much they might want uh, as well to to give some some medicine that will relieve the itch and as well as the um, medicine that will kill the mites if the itch is just a little bit then it would it would be better to give the drugs that will kill the the mites then the itch will will just go so there are specific drugs there are there are some that you can pour on the skin and they will kill the mites but uh, there are also others that you inject and it, it goes throughout the whole body and it will kill the mites that are all over the, the skin of that animal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also uh, about uh, preventing, because we are saying that they are, they are in the environment, they are in the pen, as it scratches some of them are left on the, on the wall. So if you treat and you, you leave the others, means they will just come back on the pig, isn't it? So you need to make sure that you destroy all the mites that are in that pen. In that case, you need to use medicines we call acaricides, so that you wash the pen, you wash the floor, and uh, if the skin, if, if the pig's skin is not is not broken, so that it has not scratched and it, it has a wound, you can also use that to, to wash the the pig's skin. But that is a problem because if the pig is the pig scratched and it has a wound, then that medicine can go and poison the pig. So let's use the medicines that are meant for the pig and ones that are meant to, to kill the mites on the pen. Yeah. When you're talking about this type of drugs that you can administer, mm -hmm. for me as a farmer, can I just administer this by myself without needing any services of a vet? Uh, when we talk about uh, the particular drugs called ivermectins that are used to kill the mites, they are, you, the, the farmer, because they are not experienced, could cause uh, overdosing, which can come with problems, or underdosing, which will also come with problems. So in this particular case, I will encourage the farmer, let, the, let a vet, let a qualified vet, come and, and manage that because a qualified vet will also know whether that animal requires some medication to relieve the itch on the skin which the farmer might not be able to assess or to, to treat effectively. That is quite insightful Daktari but we have to take a short commercial break. When we come back we learn more about external parasites and how you can control them in your farm. <laughs> 